So in this video, I'm going to show you how in four days I went from not knowing Dream Theater's Erotomania's main guitar solo to being able to play it like this. And if you get value from this video, please like the video and subscribe. So in this video, I'm going to be documenting the process of learning the main guitar solo in Erotomania by Dream Theater, where I go from not knowing it all to having it memorized and then up to speed to play for a playthrough video. My name is Jacob Melling. I'm a guitar teacher. I've been teaching for 16 years and I've been playing guitar for 25 years. And this is what I do every day. So this video is primarily to document how I approach learning a song that I don't know and that I don't have tablatures for for my students, but I'm gonna share it with the whole YouTube world anyways on how I approach it. This is what works for me, it might not work for you, but this is what I've done for years in order to learn any song that I wanna play. So my first step whenever I'm gonna go learn a song is to actually go and learn it by ear. And what I do is I have the MP3 of the song and I open the song in a software called Transcribe, which allows me to isolate certain sections of the song and allows me to slow it down and work on it in small increments until I have it. But what I do is I have blank guitar tablature that I use and it's on, on a piece of paper that I print out and I get a pen or pencil and I sit down and I sit there and transcribe the song a little second, uh, second by second until I have the, the piece that I'm trying to learn completely transcribed. That's my first step. I'm not trying to learn it or memorize it. I'm just trying to get all the notes documented in the way I hear it and into the patterns on the fretboard that I understand based on like the scales or arpeggios that I've learned over the years. When you first start doing this process, it's actually kind of a humbling experience because you're going to make mistakes and errors when you're first transcribing things in and you're going to mess up. It's not going to be perfect the first time or the second time or the third time. But I think it was like eight years into my guitar journey that I resolved to only learn songs by ears. So what I did is I resolved to stop learning songs or solos or anything that I wanted to learn from tablatures. And I forced myself to start learning it by ear and transcribing it for myself and getting a blueprint of the song in my ear as I learn the song. And it's crazy when you are listening to the song slowed down you're really able to hear all the nuances of all the riffs and you start building like a mental memory of what it sounds like when you've got it slowed down so I've got the song queued up here in transcribe and what I've done is I fast forwarded already to the section where the solo or the main solo at which is the the main fast solo that everybody knows out of the song. You know, this is a solo I've wanted to learn forever since I was like a little kid. I just never got around to it. And I've just been recently getting around to this song finally, uh, in my own time, in my spare time outside of teaching or family time. So I have the song queued up, but this is like the whole solo that is, that is isolated right now. So what I actually do is I go in and just pick like the first couple seconds. So I'm not even going to go to the second phrase. It would be this first phrase. So now that I have that queued up, what I can do is I can actually go and slow it down in the software now where instead of trying to pick it out at speed, I can slow down, say 50% speed. And I can start hearing the you know, you can start hearing the little scale pattern. You know, if you've ever practiced your hexagonal shapes, you can start hearing this pattern pop out right away. I'm not so worried about playing it perfect at this point or having the right fingerings or the right picking patterns. I'll figure that out after I've got the whole thing memorized. At this point, my only objective is to take what I'm hearing and get it documented on paper. A lot of people use Guitar Pro and Transcribe right there. I feel that that impedes my flow. So I don't actually like to use Guitar Pro while I transcribe because I just want to freehand write things down as I go. And I found for me, that's the fastest way to do it. And I don't get hung up forever on the rhythms where it's like, if I'm transcribing into Guitar Pro, I will literally sit there and geek on it forever. And then I end up causing myself like four times the amount of time to just transcribe the same thing. Whereas I can transcribe it onto a sheet of paper really quick and batch it the way I understand it. And then if I choose to put it in Guitar Pro after that, then so be it. Cool. But in the meantime, I'm going to get to transcribing this and I'll check in with you once I'm done with it.
All right, so here we are. Uh, it took me about seven and a half, eight minutes to get that part transcribed, but now I've got a handwritten tab version of the Dream Theater Erotomania main solo. And as you can see, I put lines in it, and this is not to indicate measures for me. The way, the reason why I put a line there is to is to signal where the end of a phrase is. So instead of thinking in measures, I'm thinking in phrases or what I hear batching. So it's like this whole line right here all the way to the half of the second line. I hear as this overall grouping of So that's the end of that first phrase. The cool part about transcribing it as I go along in these little five second intervals, because I'm sitting there looping these sections over and over and over, I actually end up memorizing the riff at the same time as I'm transcribing it. So because I sat there and hand transcribed this whole thing, I've already got the, the solo memorized. So the next part, I've got it memorized, but it's at a slower speed at the moment. So instead of being fast, I have it memorized slow. So I've got it transcribed. I got it note for note along with the song. I got I I struggled there for a second with getting the placement of this one. I can hear it's the same same grouping uh, hexagonal shape inside of the scale, but it was kind of tough to hear where where he was going with it where where it was there to there or if it was But once I got to the next riff, the, it was pretty obvious that it was down here at the second fret. So he's just shifting it down an octave, kind of back a couple frets and then into the last little shape. It was actually easier than I thought because the first two riffs, this section, the whoops. Once it got into the third section where it went to this. I see that it fits right into the natural like C Ionian shape and then everything is in that C Ionian grid for the rest of the time, except for that one riff where he, after he comes up here and he's like kind of in the A Aeolian shape. So it's like C, C, B, A type of thing. As he goes in that, he hops up into the harmonic minor. And then he does it again down in octave. Except it's. So it's kind of kind of cool grouping, a uh, cool, cool pattern that he's playing. And it sounds really good up to speed. But now that I have it down, what I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to go through and work out my picking patterns for the whole thing. I think I kind of have a general idea of what I want already. Most of the, the scale shapes and patterns, f they fall into the standard scale grid that you'd use fingering wise. Whether that's like a pointer middle pinky with a stretch or pointer middle pinky in the kind of the closed position or, or pointer ring pinky in the closed position. So the, none of the, nothing in it is like this crazy shape or pattern really. It's just 
seeing how the little hexagonal outside of the little string skipping thing in the very beginning, it's pretty easy because it follows like a hexagonal grid for the rest of the time. So what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to work out the picking patterns and get really clear on how I want to pick each note. Once I have the picking grid along with the little hexagonal shapes, and I'm just going to stick to that grid and never deviate from it and program it like as if I was programming computer software until it's just dialed in. And then from there, I'll be practicing it really slow every single day until I've got it nailed in right with the song. And then, and then after that, I start ramping up the speed. So I'm going to go and figure out the picking patterns that I want for this. And then I'll check back in with you. At this point, I've figured out all of my picking direction symbols for every single note inside of the Erotomania main solo. And what I've done is I've gone back into my tablature and I've added my pick direction symbols to every single note. And you can see I messed up right here in the beginning. But, you know, I worked out what was natural to me and what felt the best and what flowed the best. And I put pick direction symbols on every single note through the whole solo. And I've got it committed to memory already just because it's it's what I would do naturally. Whereas John Petrucci probably alternate picks everything. What I've done is I've used like economy picking in certain areas because it's what flows most natural to me. Instead of reprogramming how I would pick everything, I'm just gonna go with the flow of what works. I'm still gonna get the economy picking to sound the same. But you know, it's probably not exactly how John Petrucci picks through it. And you can probably pick through it better than me anyways. But if that doesn't matter to you, then I'm gonna go with the picking directions that are most natural for me. So when it comes to the fret hand fingerings, I'm gonna go with what I would naturally do inside of a three note per string scale since that's what feels natural on this solo. What the next phase of learning this song is now. So now that I have all the notes worked out and I have all the picking directions worked out and I have all the fret hand fingerings that I'm gonna use for the solo. So the next phase of what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slowly and deliberately practice the whole solo or if there's challenge spots, I'm gonna chunk those challenge spots down and work on those and deliberately focus on those until I have them and I've got a better grasp on them and then I'll merge them back into the overall solo. But what I'm doing is I'm thinking as if I'm programming computer code and I'm trying to program the right muscle memory, the right fret hand movements, the minimal movement, minimal tension, smallest pick motions possible. I'm trying to just program everything with no tension or as little tension as possible and just do it slowly and execute every note properly. Only once I have that memorized and it's flowing really well do I start pushing speed. So in the beginning, I'm not playing to the track. I'm not playing to a click track yet. I'm not playing to the backing track or the drums or trying to even speed it up to 100%. It's slow, deliberate, and just trying to convert it into muscle memory as fast as possible. And once I have that converted into muscle memory, that's when I'll start pushing speed. But when I practice, what I do is I use this trusty little sidekick called a timer here. And, uh, or one of my favorite guitar players of all time, Rusty Cooley, when I was talking to him one time, he was telling me that he always used practice timers while he was practicing. Not when he was creating or writing or anything like that. That was like free time. But when he was practicing, he used timers. And what he would say is he'd set it for five minutes, three minutes, two minutes, or one minute. And he would give like his full 100% laser beam like focus during that time. That's how he would produce these crazy results. I've used a timer for a long time, but I would set these long intervals and I would let the whole timer count down. Now, when I'm working on drills and, and things that are more monotonous, or you know, I'm just trying to execute a single motion or something, then I set the one, two, three, or five minute timers because then I'm able to focus intensely for a short burst of time and then put it down and take a break. And then I come back and I, I do my set amount of timers, like sets in the gym. I don't do sets where it's kind of loose. It's like I'd rather have a isolated focus time to work on something and then give it my all and then 
be on a break or noodling. And then once it's time to be back on the timer, I'm giving it my all again. Now, I usually like to set five minute timers because it, it's pretty easy for me to stay focused for five minutes. It's kind of like a muscle that you build up over time. But a lot of students that I teach, I notice that they need to start out with one or two minute timers because their attention span isn't quite built yet. The muscle to focus intensely like that for five minutes isn't there yet. And it, it can be fatiguing when you when you have like this laser beam focus, because it's, it's real highly focused practice that's using up all your mental bandwidth while you're doing it. It's not just loose. Now, like I said, if I was doing like a monotonous practice that wasn't very fun to me, I'm going to set five minute timers. But since this is one of my favorite songs and I've wanted to play it ever since I was a little kid, this is something that I could easily practice for 60 minutes without taking a break or getting distracted from. So I set this timer and during this timer, you know, this thing right here doesn't get turned on. It's, it goes on airplane mode during that time. I don't answer my emails during that time. Emails off, messengers off, all social media is turned down. It's literally me, my guitar, my amp and the timer. And that's what I'm doing. Or if I'm playing to the backing track and backing track software or slow down software or logic pro, whatever I'm working in. If I do have to take a break during the middle of my practice, so I got to get up and get a drink of water or something. I can hit pause on my timer and say, it's like at 38 minutes left. I can hit pause. And while I go and get my water, the timer is not counting down. It doesn't start again until I'm back in my seat and guitar in hand and practicing. So true to the timer. I'm setting an hour timer because the theory of constraints is real and Parkinson's law is real. Work expands to fill the allotted time. So if I give myself four hours to get the activity done that I need to get done, it's going to take four hours. If I give myself one hour, it's going to take one hour. You know, I got other stuff that I want to practice throughout the day and other stuff that I want to work on. But what I'm willing to do is commit one hour or 60 minutes to working on this solo every day. And my plan is by Sunday, I will have the song memorized, learned, up to speed, along with the song and recorded onto video for the playthrough. So today is Tuesday, February 20th. My plan is by Sunday, February 25th, I'm ready to share the playthrough video of the main solo. Now I might get the song done before then. Maybe by Friday, I've got it learned and up to speed and it's ready to record. And I might just record it on Friday. But if not, then I'll take all the way till Sunday before I record it. Here's the reality is I can't control the outcome. I can only control the action. So I can't control when, when my muscle memory programming will have it down. It might be today after the first hour of practice. It might be Sunday after several days of practicing it. All I can do is control the action, control the controllable, and that's practice to this timer. And that's it. And I put in the work. So this is Tuesday, February 20th. I'm going to get to practice, do my hour of working on the solo, memorizing it, programming it. All right, so here we are day two of practice on the Dream Theater Errata Mania main solo. It's now Wednesday, February 21st, 2024. So yesterday I, f I transcribed the solo, figured out the picking patterns, and then did an hour of practice on it, got it memorized. I actually got it up to speed, but it's kind of sloppy. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to queue up the solo in transcribe and I'm going to practice along with the solo at 50% speed for probably about a half an hour. And then the second half hour, I'm going to start slowly bumping it up to speed. And my focus will be on really getting the picking crisp with it, everything clean. And then playing to the drums inside of the track. So I'll be listening for the timing on the drums and, and how to hit in time with it. And then from there, like I said, at the end, I'm ramping it up to speed. And then the last 10 minutes, I'll probably try to push to like 110% speed. So I'm actually gonna try to go faster than the song and then come back down and play at 100% speed. So I'm about to hit my hour of practice on it today and I'll check back in with you tomorrow.
Okay, so today's day three of working on the main guitar solo from Dream Theater's Erotomania. Good news is by day two, the whole second half of the hour of practice, I'm able to hit the song at 100% speed. However, there's some sloppy parts to it. So, so at the end of the practice session, I recorded a video of me playing through it several times and I might and, and because I'm able to watch the video back, I'm able to identify my weak points and where I'm struggling to hit it. And so today, my first half an hour of practice is going to be geared towards isolating those problem areas and working on them and reprogramming them or working more on the programming of them until I really have it down. And then the second half of the practice will be ramping up the speed again and working on the whole solo start to finish at speed on loop straight for half an hour, no breaks. So I'm going to get to practice and I'll check back in with you tomorrow. So today's day four of working on Dream Theater's Erotomania's main solo, and it's now Friday, February 23rd of 2024. So I pretty much have the solo up to speed. It's ready to record. But what I'm going to do today and tomorrow is, is just continue to work on the cleanliness of the whole thing and with how clean I can play all the notes without having any slop in there. And then I also identified while watching the playback video the one of the biggest challenges I have right now is making sure to add the vibrato on the end of the first two phrases. And especially when I get on video, it's easy to kind of forget it as I'm, you, you know, you have the pressure of the all seeing eye right here on me a little bit. And I don't know if it's so much knowing that other people are going to watch it or that I'm going to watch it back. And it, you know, it becomes this thing where it's easy to forget those little things versus while I'm practicing it, you know, just without the camera on, I remember to add it in each time, but then it's like I'm on playback. I watch and it's like, Oh, I, f I forgot it. <laughs> so I'm in a, I'm going to make sure to isolate those first two phrases today and, and make sure that I get that vibrato in on each of the first two phrases and then really just loop that section where I'm hitting that over and over and over with the vibrato and then taking that up to speed. And then at the end, merging it all back with the entire solo. I also noticed that the first 10 minutes, my hands felt kind of sluggish yesterday. I assume that's probably from working on the solo at top speed for a half an hour straight instead of, uh, you know, only one or two playthroughs of it. But, you know, after about 10 minutes of practice, it my hand loosened back up and it was just back to flowing naturally with all the relaxed feeling again. So I'm going to get back to practice, put in another hour and I'll check back in with you tomorrow. Okay, so after four days of practice, I feel like I have it good enough to just record the playthrough video. So I'm gonna go record that really quick. And here it is for you to watch. Okay, a little after action breakdown here. So what went well is it only took me four hours to learn and get it up to speed and ready to play for the playthrough. 
uh, all four hours that I put into it were really focused and enjoyable. Again, it's a solo that I've wanted to play for a long time, so it was kind of exciting for me to work on. Transcribing it went smoothly. There was, I mean, a couple little times where I had a challenge of where to place a certain grouping of notes, but figured it out after the next note or after the next phrase came along. Picking patterns fell in place pretty well. Biggest thing I noticed was the getting that vibrato on the first two phrases was a struggle for me, and I just kind of left it good enough for the video instead of trying to spend two extra days just perfecting the two vibratos on it. I could have done better, but you know, I just decided to go for it and shoot the video. So what was a struggle? The struggle was the two vibratos at the on the first two phrases, and then when I was recording the video, the challenge was getting the picking as smooth as John Petrucci. So when I was listening back to the recordings, it took me a couple different shoots to get to get a take all the way through that was actually good. I noticed that I had a, as I'm listening back to John Petrucci, his picking is amazing. Like just how good and crisp every note is versus Whereas in mine, I had some dips in like my articulation that made it not flow as good as his. So I really had to re-record this several times to get that articulation present all the way through the entire solo. And that was probably the hardest part of the whole thing for me. What I learned is it's easy to focus on just the notes and forget about the articulations out of the picking hands, but those articulations in the picking hand are just as important to focus on and practice to get your playing to sound like the top level guys. I mean, there's a reason why John Petrucci's out there shredding people's faces off and I'm not. So, I mean, that guy's amazing. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like the video and subscribe and look out for more of these in the future. See you later.